Good morning, students. Today, our topic for discussion is risk analysis, risk analysis method in capital budgeting. There are different methods are used for analyzing the risk. These methods we are going to see one by one. What are the methods are used for analyzing the risk? Risk adjusted discount rate, probability assignments, standard deviation, coefficient of variance, certainty equivalent approach, decision tree approach. All these methods we'll see one by one. Before going through different methods, let me explain the meaning of each term. Certainty equivalent. The return required with the certainty to make the investor difference indifferent between certain return and particular uncertain return. Here we are differentiating what is the percentage of or probability of getting our return is certain and what is it, how much is a uncertain. Next is a coefficient of variation. Variation is nothing but your risk associated or standard deviation. How much your, that is the deviation is happen from mean that will be analyzed. So this is one of the important measure for measuring the risk associated with the project. A relative measure of variability of the outcomes associated with an event. It is calculated by dividing the standard deviation of a distribution by the mean. Next method is the decision tree. It is one of the important method. It is useful for identifying the chances of event that is a risk as well as return associated with the each chances of event. Here, there are they will predict the different chances that that will be explained in form of decision tree. It is used to handle risk situation. Next is the risk adjusted discount rate. A discount rate used in capital expenditure decision that has been adjusted for a risk. It determines by adding an appropriate risk premium to the risk less rate of return. That is a risk-free return. So risk-free return means there is, the risk is zero. When in the market, when the investor undertaking high amount of risk, automatically premium will be incorporated. That is called as a risk premium for taking the high amount of risk. So risk premium is nothing but it is difference between the expected rate of return on a risky project and rate of return on riskless project. That is the difference will be calculated. Next method. So we do one by one. What is risk adjusted discount rate? Risk adjusted discount rate is the rate used in the calculation of present value of a risky investment. So what is its value now that will be calculated? It is calculated as for follows. The formula is risk-free return plus beta. Beta is nothing but your market risk. So RM, what is RM? RM is a market return minus RF. RF is a risk-free return. The risk adjusted discount rate is the total of risk-free return. That is the required rate of return on risk-free investment and market premium. So risk-free return means you know that the risk is zero. The market premium means when the investor is undertaking risk in order to earn return, definitely that will be the investor is guaranteed market premium. That is the required return of the market. So in the financial analyst use their risk adjusted discount rate to discount a firm's cash flow to the present value and determine that investor should accept for a particular investment. Next, what is standard deviation and coefficient of variation? Standard deviation is a risk. It is used to calculate the risk of a particular project or particular asset. Then you may get a doubt that what is beta? Beta is a market risk. It is used to calculate the market risk. So now I, let me explain standard deviation. Standard deviation is a 
statistical measure of dispersion. It measures the deviation from a central number that is mean. How much it's deviating from the mean. By calculating standard deviation in capital budgeting, we can measure in each case the extent of variation. How much variation happened that can be analyzed. Higher the standard deviation, higher the risk associated with the project. When the standard deviation is less, we can say that the project is not having high risk. However, wherever returns are expressed in revenue terms, the coefficient of variation gives better measurement for risk evaluation. The formula used for coefficient of variation is calculated as follows. Coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation divided by net present value. So let me explain this method, coefficient of variation method with this problem. Here, X Limited is considering to start a new project for which it has gathered the following data. So the company X is going to start a new project. They have estimated net present value 80,000, 1,10,000, 1,42,500. So here, let me explain the question. The probability of getting 80,000 is 30 percentage. 0.3 means 30 percentage. The probability of getting 1,10,000 is 30 percentage. The probability of getting net present value 1,42,500 is 25, 20 percentage. Now compute the risk associated with the project that is standard deviation. So as far as this project is given, probability of getting net present value, net present value means present value of cash flow minus present value of cash outflow that is given here. So here it is given that we see net present value 80,000, 110,000, 142,500. Then probability is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Expected NPV. So when you multiply NPV with probability, you will get expected NPV. 80,000 into 0 0.3, 110,000 into 0 0.3, 142,500 into 0 0.2. So you will be getting first case 24,000, 33,000, 28,500. So total altogether, your NPV expected is 85,500. Now, this is expected NPV. Now, next step, you have to calculate the standard deviation of a project A. So NPV is given 80,000, 110,000, 142,500. Now, what you have to do, you have to calculate the D. So D is given minus 5,500, 24,500, 57,000. Next thing you have to calculate the D square. So what is D square? So D means the deviation. How much is the deviation from the mean? So from the mean, you have, you have calculated the mean, then you deducted the mean. Okay, so D square is, you have get, D square is given, you have to calculate the D square, for all the three cases, then what is the probability? Probability is listed here, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Then you multiply P and D square, so you'll be getting this much value. So standard deviation is, now standard deviation square is, that is sigma square is, values are given. Then you apply the formula, coefficient of, coefficient of variation is equal to, standard deviation divided by NPV. The answer is that is 28,965 divided by 85,500. The answer is 0 0.34. So this is a this much risk associated. So next problem, similar type of problem. Here directly given what is standard deviation, expected NPV, just you have to apply the formula. Here, I'll read out the question. A company is considering project X and Y with the following information. Project, there are two types of project, project X, project Y. Expected NPV, 18,000, 22,000. Standard deviation is given 
6,500, 7,200. Question is, there are two types of project is given, project X and project Y. Which project will you recommend? So on the basis of thinking, now we have to calculate the coefficient of variation. With the help of the coefficient of variation, you can identify which project is having less risk. So on the basis of the information about standard deviation, project X and Y, the project Y is better as it has lower standard deviation. Yes, here coefficient of variation, all the values are directly given, just to give to substitute. Standard deviation divided by NPV. In case of project X, your standard deviation is 6,500. Then NPV is 18,000. Project Y, 7,200. 22,000. So you are getting 0.327. Project C, when compared to coefficient of variation, we can come to conclusion that project Y is better as it C weak, that is coefficient of variation is lesser than project B, sorry, project X. I think it is clear. Next thing, another question also given. Here I wanted to explain similar type of problem. The hypothetical company limited has given the following possible cash flow for two or two for the project, cash flow for two for the project X and Y, out of which one, out of which one they wish to undertake. That is, it means that they are having a two projects, X and Y. Which project you are interested to take? Which project you can take it? So that can be analyzed with the help of risk associated. So what is the cost of the project? It's given cost of the project is 5,000. Okay, so how we can select a project? Previous method, what is the modern method, NPV, net present, that is a net present value method, then payback period method, internal rate of method, all this method, what we have done in terms of return. In terms of return, we have ranked the project we have selected. But as far as this method is concerned, in, we are focusing on the risk associated with the project. So which project is having less risk, that will be selected. Okay, so here, find out which project is more risky by adoption of standard deviation approach and coefficient of variation. Okay, here it is given that possible event. So there are how many event possibilities that A, B, C, D, E. Cash info possible 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. These are possible. Now, here it is given probability of receiving this cash flow. The probability of receiving 4,000 is 10 percentage. The probability of receiving 5,000 is 20 percentage. Probability of receiving 6,000 is 40 percentage. The probability of receiving 7,000 is 20 percentage. And probability are receiving 8,000 is 10 percentage. So this is about project X. Then you go to project Y. Project Y cash flows are also given. Then probability are receiving the income is also given. So in case of probability Y, the cash inflows are given that 12,000, 12,000 is a, the chances of getting 12,000 is 10 percentage. The chances of getting 10,000 is, the chances of getting 10,000 is 15 percentage. Then the chances of getting 8,000 is 50 percentage. The chances of getting 6,000 is 15 percentage. Chances of getting cash inflow of 4,000 is 10 percentage. Now we will work out which project is less risky. So here, same formula. So you have to calculate the cash in, that is cash inflow is given, probability is given. Now you have to calculate the deviation that is from the mean. So here calculated mean is 6,000 because here it is between uh, two values, 6,000. So what they have done, 4,000 minus mean, 2,000, 5,000 minus 6,000, 1,000, 6,000, zero. 7,000 minus 6,000, 1,000, 8,000 minus 6,000, 2,000. This is your deviation. Then you square the deviation 
when you square up the deviation you are getting then what you have to do you have to multiply with the probability see squaring the deviation must be multiply with this so when you multiply this you are getting the value next thing what you have to do after multiplying you are getting the mean deviation that is probability into deviation so you are getting this much value now you substitute in the formula so formula is standard deviation divided by mean standard deviation divided by mean in that case you are getting 18.25 percentage is the risk 18.25 percentage is the risk similarly it is calculated same formula same procedure is applied for calculating project y also so when you apply the project y you are getting 26.22 percentage so now we can it is very clear that project x the standard deviation coefficient of variation is 18.25 then in case of project y the efficient coefficient of variation is 26.22 so when compared to the project x so when compared to project y the project x risk is less so we can go for project x next next method is that certainty equivalent factor so last case probability of getting the return we have analyzed now we are how much we are certain about the return how much we are sure about the return or confidence about the return that we are going to analyze certainty equivalent factor is the ratio of assured cash flow to the uncertain cash flow so how much is the cash flow we are very sure that divided by uncertain cash flow so under this approach what will you do the cash flows expected in a project are converted into riskless equivalent amount the adjustment factor used is called cef that is certainty equivalent factor so we have to identify that certainty equivalent factor generally certainty equivalent factor lies between 0 to 1 between 0 and 1 a coefficient of 1 indicates that cash flows are certain please understand the coefficient of 1 indicates that cash flows are certain the greater the risk in cash flow the smaller will be certainty equivalent factor for receipt and larger will be certainty equivalent factor for payments so while employing this method the decision makers estimates the sum he must be assured of receiving in order that he is indifferent between an assured sum and expected value of this key sum so now we will concentrate how to calculate certainty equivalent approach problem under certainty equivalent approach first step 1 convert uncertain cash flow to certain that is the first step cash flow by multiplying with the certainty equivalent factor in case of step 2 what will you do discount the certain cash flow at the risk free rate to arrive at npv so what is the decision rule if the resultant npv is positive we can accept the project proposal so again repeat step 1 convert uncertain cash flow to certain certain cash flow by multiplying it, it with the certainty equivalent factor first you have to identify the certainty equivalent factor then you have to convert uncertain cash flow to certain cash flow step 2 discount the certain cash flow at the risk free rate to arrive the npv so what is the decision rule if the resultant npv is positive the project can be accepted okay let me explain this problem i'll read out the question and z limited is considering to take a new project the management of the company use certainty equivalent approach to evaluate such type of project following information is available for the project so five years data are given certainty factor equivalent values are given 0.90 0.85 0.75 0.70 0.65 0.75 0.80 0.85 0.90 0.85 0.75 0.80 0.85 0.90 0.85 0.85 0.90 0.85 0.85 0.90 0.85 0.85 0.85 0.85 0.85 
Similarly, certainty factor actual answer given. Here also given C of AT, that is also given. 150,000, everything. Cash flow after tax. CFA means, CFAD means cash flow after tax. This is the cash flow we are getting. Pro projects requires an initial investment of 3 lakhs. The company's cost of capital is 12 percentage and risk-free borrowing rate is 7 percentage. Advise the company whether you should take the project or not. See, please understand here total investment made by the company is 3 lakhs. Then your cash initial, that is cash flow for five years after tax are given for five years. Certainty equivalent values are also given. Now, we'll solve the problem. First list out, five years cash flow after tax also you will have. You just write it. Then certainty factor also you write it. First thing what you have to do, adjusted cash inflow after tax because these values are 115 all the cases 115 percent so now we want to adjust with the certainty factor so multiply it with the ce when you multiply 115000 into 0 0.90 you are getting 103500 next second year 115000 into 0 0.85 you are getting 97750 so likewise you have to calculate for the all the five years next after finding out adjusted cash flow after tax you have to multiply it with the present value factor present value factor is given for seven percentage that's for seven percentage these are the values 0 0.935 0 0.87 so this you can refer annuity table and find out the values so now what you have to do you multiply the present value factor into adjusted cash flow after tax. So this both the values you have to multiply. When you one lakh three thousand five hundred into 0 0.935, 97,750 into 0 0.83. When you multiply all these things, you will get the value of total value of three lakh sixty-seven thousand two hundred seven. This is the total present value after adjusting the certainty equivalent factor and multiplying you are discounting the cash flow so after doing everything you are getting the cash present value of money is three lakh sixty seven thousand two not seven now you deduct the initial investment when you deduct the initial investment three lakhs you are getting sixty seven thousand two not seven so this is the net present value i think it's clear to you next we'll move on to the expected cash flow Expected cash flows are calculated by assigning probabilities to estimated cash flow in capital budgeting. Generally, what will you do? They will estimate how much is the cash flow. Then multiply with the probabilities that they will do. Just I will explain what is what is meant that. The concept of probability is the fundamental to the use of the risk analysis in technique because risk is very much uncertain. We cannot certainly forecast so what we have to do probability concept is applicable this much percentage this may incur that will be identified so it may be defined as the likelihood of occurrence of an event if the event is certain to occur, occur the probability of its occurrence is one but if an event is certain not to occur the probability of its occurrence is zero so simple thing is the probability occurrence if it is going to occur, occur one, if it is not going to occur, it's zero. Okay, now the probability of all the events to occur lies between zero and one. So the value lies between one and, that is zero and one. Probability distribution can be used to compute expected value. For this purpose, following procedure is adopted. So the, what is the procedure here? Probability distribution can be used to compute expected value. For this purpose, following procedure is adopted. Step one, estimate probability distribution. Estimate probability distribution. Step two, multiply values with the probability of each outcome step. Third one, aggregate the result of step two. Okay, here the question is given. It's very easy, simple problem. Everyone can understand. X limited is considering to start a new project for which 
it has gathered following data cash flows are given 30000 60000 120000 150000 in the probability of getting that cash flow is also given point that is 10 percentage 4 percentage 4 percentage 1 percentage calculate expected cash flow so it is very simple first write down the cash flow list out the cash flow here probability you multiply the cash flow into probability so you will get the expected cash flow how much would be your cash flow so when you total up you are getting nine percent so this is the answer for expected cash flow i think it's very easy next next method is the call calculate the expected NP. probability distribution for two project is given similar to the previous problem here NPV is given 5,000, 7,500, 10,000. Probability is given 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1. Similarly, in case of project Y, your NP is also given first year nil, first cases nil. Second thing is 7,500, third cases 15,000. So the probability is also given 0 0.1, 0 0.7, 0 0.2. Now, you calculate so just to multiply with the probability you will get the expected npv so your expected npv is 7250 when you total up this 5250 plus 1000 6000 6000 plus uh, 6250 plus 1000 7250 similarly you calculate here also first case 0 0.1 so zero second case the chances are 0 0.7 percentage so 70 percentage so 0 0.7 into 7,500, you are getting 5,250. Then 15,000 into 0.2, you are getting 3,000. So the expected NPV is 8,250. In case of second case, the your NPV is more than the first case. Second case, it is 8,250. First case, 7,250. Next, decision tree technique. It is an important technique. Everybody can easily understand by looking at the graphical representation itself. So most of the organization, they are following the decision tree analysis. It is one of the important method to evaluate the risk of a proposal. A decision tree shows the sequential outcome of a risky decision. The decision tree approach get its name because of resemblance with capital budgeting risk analysis, tree having number of branches. A number of branches means what is the number of proposals are chances. A capital budgeting decision tree shows the cash flows and net present value of projects under different possible circumstances. So here, decision tree technique. A company has made the following estimate. This is a question. I would like to explain this with the decision tree. A company has made the following estimate of the cash flow after tax of the proposed project. The company used decision tree analysis to get clear picture of project cash flow. The project cost 80,000 and the expenditure life of the project is two years. Again, I repeat, the initial investment or cost of the project is 80,000 and the estimated life of an asset is two years. Okay, so now net cash flows for the end year, that is 0.4, that is 40 percentage probability that cash flow after tax will be 50,000 and 0.6 probability that cash flow after tax would be 60,000. So what is meant that in the year one, the first year, 40 percentage chances are there to receive 50,000. Then 60 percentage chances are there to receive 60,000 of cash flow after tax. So I think it's clear, project cost is 80,000, life of asset is two year, the first year net cash flow expected is 40 percentage probability of receiving 50,000, 60 percentage probability of receiving 60,000. So now we'll see. Here the question is given. A company has made following. So in the continuation of the previous one, the question. A company has made following estimate cash flow after tax of the project, proposed project. The company use decision tree. So I'm explaining again the question. The company uses decision tree analysis to get a clear picture of the project cash flow. 
the project can cost is 80000 and the expected life of the project is 2 years the cash inflows are now it's given that i already explained 50000 and 60000 okay next it's given that if cash flow after tax that is second year it's given 24000 32000 44000 here 40000 50000 60000 the probability of getting the this revenue is explained 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. The firm uses 10% discount rate for this type of investment. We'll see here. Here the question is cash outflow. That is the initial investment. What they made is 80,000. They have divided that two branches like a tree. First, first year. Receiving 50,000 is 40 percentage chances. Receiving 60,000 is 60 percentage chances. Then second year from this project, the revenue would be 24,000. The 20 percentage are receiving is 24,000. 32,000 is 30 percentage. 44,000 is 50 percentage. Now you come to 60,000. Here, receiving 40,000 is 40 percentage. 50,000 is 50 percentage, 60,000 is 10 percentage. Now, so I think it's clear now how they are doing calculating the net present value cash flow. So, here in the project, here all the cases, three combination is given, because previous case, three combinations are given. Here you see three combination. So, here three combination for Again, I'll go back. Three combination here, also three combination. So, first year 50,000, 50,000, 50,000. Present value factor because the question it is given clearly 10 percentage cost of capital. The project is a 10 percentage cost of capital. So, 10 percentage cost of capital means the values are given. Here you see. Here it is clearly given. Firm uses 10 percentage discount rate for all this type of investment. So you have to use the 10% present value of money. 10% present value of money for the first year is 0.90 because all the cash flow are related to first year. So you write the first year discount factor. Both the things you multiply. When you multiply this, you will get the 50,000, 0.90 present value factor. Then next thing you do, what you have to do here, 24,000, 32,000, 44,000, it's given. That also you write it, 24,000, 32,000, 44,000. Similarly, in case of, similarly, in case of project, that is 60,000 cases, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. That also you write here, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. So th these amount will be generated in the second year. So you have to discount factor at 10 percentage cost of capital you have to use the second year discount value 0.826. You multiply this, you will get the present value 2. So here, first one, 50,000, 60,000, present value 1. Then the amount generated in the second year, that will give the present value 2. Now, combination you have to. So you total up present value 1, present value 2. That is first year plus second year. First year, whatever amount you are getting, this is first year, present value 1. This is second year. So you add up everything. Now initial investment, you just put initial in, initial investment is 80,000, 80,000. Now you have to calculate the present value. Present value, that is present value minus initial investment. So here two values are A and B are negative. Why it is negative? So negative mean, means you cannot accept the proposal. Then you have to calculate the joint. So here, Present value, this column minus this column. So present value minus initial investment. You have calculated all the things. Then you have to calculate the joint property. Joint probabilities. What is joint probability? 0. 0.4 into 0. 0.2. 0. 0.4 into 0. 0.3. 0. 0.4 into 0. 0.5. This is the joint probability. Then 0. 0.6 into 0. 0.4. 0. 0.6 into 0. 0.5. 0. 0.6 into 0. 0.4. That is joint probability. So you multiply, now you will get the expected NPV. 
So multiply your NPV with joint probability, you will get the expected NPV. So expected NPV is 6,223. So you can accept this proposal. Thank you, students. I think in this class, we have, I have explained the various uh, terms. What are the different risk analysis technique? That is, a, I repeat, what are the method we have gone through? First one, standard deviation method. Then next method, what we have done? Certainty equivalent, equivalent factor. Third is the expected cash flow assigning probability, expected cash flow method we have done. Next, the decision tree method. So I think all these methods are very clear. Thank you, students.